What do you like to do when you're not here? Go around with the bike through the city. You can't find that many places where it's better than here. Prices are high in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> I played left winger a long time. I sit here? Sit yeah, there. we prepared a... Oh, brilliant. Everything for you. We like to do like these interviews that's not so focused on the next game, but it's like getting mm -hmm. to know you, like okay. who is Patrick and what is your story and... Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, good. Yeah. Good, good. Are you ready, Patrick? Let's go then. Patrick, welcome in the hot chair. Thank you. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start with a, with a big question, because you've now been in Denmark for, for some months. Mm -hmm. How's life for you in Brumby, in Denmark? It's beautiful. I think it's the easiest place where I've ever been, uh, except of Austria, of course. Uh, so it was quite easy to adapt also to get to know all the people because you don't have the language barrier here. And yeah, everybody makes it so easy to yeah, to arrive fast, to get fast on your best level in football. So. It's it's a beautiful place. How is the work life balance, like football and work and 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 life balance here in Brumby, maybe also compared to mm -hmm. Germany, for example? Yeah, I think it's you can't find that many places where it's better than here because the city is amazing, the club is amazing, the yeah, like the crowd in every stadium I've played now. It's also amazing if I compare it to, to Austria, for example, where you compare the countries a bit. Uh, every time when we play, it's sold out crowd. So I'm really impressed how the league is and how the level is also. Mm. And what do you like to do when you're not here? Of course, you're here many hours every day. <laughs> but what do you like to do when you're not here? Go around with the bike through the city. Mm? I think that's quite a... A new thing what we what we tried out here we first time when we when we came we got our apartment we straight went to a bike shop and took two bikes because the city is like made to take a bike and we don't want to yeah, waste too much money on the car then because it's so much easier when you live on the in the city to go just with the bike everywhere and there is only how, how they say here there are only bad clothes no bad weather so <laughs> True. That's, that's, well, you're well integrated. That's the motto already. here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Do you have a favorite place then to go? Well, there are a lot of good places, but I, I quite like this this place next to Newhound there on the other side. This is so this is so yeah calm. The people just relax on their food market. Also this fish market. It's on the on the other side uh, of the sea where I live, and it's yeah, it's. The people are just relaxing, no stress everywhere you go. It's just tranquilo. You know, it's no stress. They're relaxed. They take their food. They are kind. Everybody is speaking English. That's like, <laughs> we're really, we're really enjoying it here. Yeah. That's good to hear. Now let's talk, uh, let's talk about football uh, and maybe go, uh, go back as far as you can remember. Yeah. Can you tell us about where did you grow up? How was growing up for you? And what role did football play in your in your life as a child? I grew up in in a small yeah village next to Salzburg. It's thirty kilometers in the north of of Salzburg. So um, first I started football playing there for I think four years. When I when I changed into the how you say it primary school here mm. primary school no high school. Mm. That's uh... when you're ten. Yeah, that's oh, the primary school. Primary school, yeah. yeah. Primary school. Oh, elementary school. Oh. Elementary school, yeah. yeah. But when I when I when I went ten, I went to Salzburg. So I traveled every yeah every day in the morning with my dad to to school. After yeah, we had like a place where we could go between school and training. Mm -hmm. And after we went to training, because then I switched clubs from my village club to Red Bull Salzburg. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I was living in the city all day just for sleeping at home. But that's also very early to like get the professional yeah. uh, life. Were you always sure that it was football for you? I think first when you start, it's, it's always a passion and you 
you can't say it's like yeah you you miss a lot in these years because you're with your best friends mm -hmm. you're with them every day you go to school together after you go to training together so you spend with your best friends uh, every day so it's like it's nice to be to be in this situation to fight for getting a pro mm -hmm. but it's also nice to be with your friends so in this kind of age you don't miss a lot because you can't go out or do anything so it was quite a nice time yeah how was the environment in the like we can see here how the the youth department is here but how was it in the, in salzburg salzburg i think is one of the best in the world mm. so everything was perfect simply perfect like we had every time we had somebody who picked us up from school took us there then took us there so it was always somebody there we could talk to as well so mm. i think salzburg is like or was the first professional club who who did this youth stuff at the best mm -hmm. level which was possible. Yeah. So what did that football education give you um, from there? Yeah, I think in, in Salzburg for me it was it was not being a goalkeeper. In Salzburg you are yeah, you are you're learning just the normal football skills. So I was not in goal until I was yeah, 14. Of course I was in goal, but during the week you train normally as a player. So you don't really get to know how. Okay, so you work goalkeeper, but yeah, yeah. You're always in the in the. Yeah, team. because Salzburg is like mm -hmm. they treat everybody the same. So you do the same like the players, you do the technique exercises the same like the players, you do the rondos, you do the passing drills, you do everything like the players. So I think this was quite helpful because if you look now at the football, the football has changed, especially at the goalkeeper position, that you have to be capable of more stuff now than 10 years ago. Yeah, that's interesting because one of the questions I actually had for you was if you ever played like in the midfield. I or played left winger a long time. Okay. Yeah, many, many years, uh, best scorer, best assist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was quite a nice time. But in the end, my dad said, you have to go to goal. So why did he say that? He's a goalie coach. He also was a was a goalie. So the biggest thing I think for him was to see his son in goal. So, and then I said, yes, okay, I can try it out, no problem. But could you see then really quick, okay, I, I got what it takes to, to be a good goalie? Yeah, goalie is something else, you know, you're, it's a lonely position. Um, you're celebrating alone. You're, when you do mistakes, you're alone. Nobody's helping you. It's, hey, you got a lot of time to think also because you, it's a mental game, you know, to being a goalie, it's just mental. I think so. Or the biggest part is the mental game and yeah so it's quite a tough position yeah yeah but uh, it's also a, a common saying that you have to be a little crazy to be a goalie do you think yeah. that's true i think this was more back in the days mm. now i think like yeah, when you look up at the best goalies now this level they are quite normal they're not like oliver khan back it's quite a normal Michael. it's a normal yeah <laughs> it's a normal uh job or normal position right now you have mm -hmm. to be just I think more clear in your head than than the normal field players yeah you said your your father was a, a goalkeeper and a goalkeeper coach uh, can you mm -hmm. take us through, through uh, what have he meant in your uh, yeah I hate training with him I couldn't I couldn't train with him it's the worst because it's yeah we're discussing all the time mm -hmm. also now when when he's watching the games or we're discussing about any other game, it's it's a never ending story. We discuss all the time and like I can remember when we trained sometimes in, in Salzburg in the holidays together, it's it was not capable. It was I have after every scene where it could be something to discuss, we discussed and you know, when, when it's your dad, you it's a it's another respect you know so it's not the same respect like you got for for example Anka mm. it's your dad you know him for 26 years now you can say a little bit different yeah right? yeah so it was poorly always a big discussion <laughs> yeah but it must have given you something also yeah, of course because yeah. he of course he learned me a lot of stuff um he's used to being a goalkeeper since 30 years or maybe more no more 40 years now so it's got a lot of experience as well seen also a lot of stuff and yeah it's it's nice to have somebody like him behind who can always help you he must be proud also i think so yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I think it was always the biggest thing for him to get his son uh, a pro goalie. So he should be proud, yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, good job for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you um, did you support a team growing up in Austria? Not not really, not really, because um, when you play for Salzburg, it's of course you are like the ball boy behind the goals. Mm. This is nice, but. I'm not really supported a team. The only team I really supported was Manchester City back in the days when Joe Hart was in goal because he was like my first, yeah, not not idol, but I quite liked him. I quite liked how he acted as a goalkeeper, how he is as a type as well. So this was my first, yeah, favorite club and fav favorite goalie. Mm. Um, I just have to find my question. Mm -hmm. um, Are there any like episodes in your career, uh, good, maybe bad, but you know, we all have these events in life that kind of shape us. Uh, yeah. Do you have any any episodes like that? I just think the the worst experience are injuries always. Mm. Sometimes it's it's bad on the pitch, sometimes it's good, but the the biggest problem you've got mentally when you're injured. So I think This is the most important part, just to stay fit. There can always be, like I said, bad parts and good parts, but to stay fit and healthy is the most important part. Mm. You can always change, like maybe your attitude or yeah, just your your aggress aggressiveness. You can change everything, but if you're injured, you can't do anything. You have to wait and you have to work to get back on the pitch. Mm. But when you're fit and healthy, you can you can change every everything as fast as possible. It's just a mental thing. Yeah. yeah. But it, but also as a goalkeeper, it must be you said also it's a mental position, uh, because if you're a striker, then you can get five minutes here, yeah. ten minutes there. As a goalie, it's mostly you play or you don't play. Yeah. And you have tried both in yeah. your career. So how is that like? Um, yeah. What is the difference between when you're playing and not playing? If there is any difference. It depends on if 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 you're a type who likes to just be in the squad and mm. yeah. Being part of the group, which is successful, like we've we've been in Leverkusen, um, yeah, then you can enjoy life. Mm. You train good, uh, the facilities are good, um, the level is good, everything's beautiful. But you just sit on the bench on the weekend, and then you have to ask yourself a question: Is this the thing what I want, or I want to change something? Mm. And in the end, I said, yeah, it doesn't feel right for me to. Yeah, it's it's a complete different thing when you're. When you're 26 and you sit on the bench, it doesn't feel like you're a real part of the success because yeah, you only train, mm. but you don't do anything in games. So I think this is always different from person to person. Yeah. Um, do you have any like what are the biggest experience you've, experiences you've had uh, mm -hmm. in your football career? The biggest experiences. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a, it's it's a tough time when you can't talk to anybody. Nobody is speaking the language. Nobody's helping you, and you you're new in a new country, mm. and it's like a bit weird because many persons are the same opinion there. Then I think there is like a problem at the club, and not a problem from the people who join the club. So this was quite a tough experience. Where was this? It was in France oh. because also. When you can feel that your family is also not feeling comfortable there, then it's something else. Then I I don't care about myself. I'm like getting aggressive on the guys because if they don't support your family to feel comfortable there, then it's another thing. They cannot support me on the pitch, but if they don't support the family behind me, then for me it's another thing. Mm. I Then I'm getting like a bit aggressive, you know, because this is not how humans should be. No. And yeah. that's quite the opposite you experienced yeah, there in Bambi. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Both on the pitch and off the pitch. Yeah, on the pitch is always like how the team is built together from the from the bosses. Mm -hmm. So I think here they quite look for a good chemistry, which I've not seen before, something like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is also an important part, I think, to have success when the chemistry in the team is good. Yeah. Um, you're also a part of the Austrian national team. 
What does that mean to you? Yeah, it's, it's, I love it. I love it to be there. So I think this is always a, a great time of the year, getting uh, together with the boys, with all the boys. Especially for me, it's nice because I'm I'm in the national team with two of my best friends. So who are they? It's 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 beautiful because we we've yeah well, we we see we see ourselves two or three times a year, mm. and when we're together in the national team, it's beautiful. We stick together all the time. We got like at least ten days always, and yeah, it's it's amazing. You actually have a an experience with Denmark. Yeah. In the national team. Yeah. Can yeah. you can you exp also with Jens Strialarsen? Can you uh, explain? <laughs> Uh, about that, uh, it, that was game? My it was my first game from start. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was quite funny because uh, we played in Vienna and suddenly the floodlight was gone for I can't remember it was 45 minutes or one hour maybe. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a tricky game when when you play your first game from beginning and yeah the floodlight is gone uh, after the warm up. So it was it was funny, but in the end I think. Uh, it was just nice. I I just enjoy when you play for the national team. I don't make myself also here now. It's just a game, you know. Football is just a game, and it's the same with the national team. It doesn't matter if it's a sold out crowd or you play fifth uh, division. Mm. It's the same game, you know. Yeah. Just the level is different, and the tempo and the speed, and but it's it's the same game. Just enjoy it, and also against Denmark, yeah. Mm. Also, especially Jens. We got a little history together because we played in in Vienna together for. Two, two or three years, I can't remember exactly how long, but it was really a good friend also of mine. So we off the pitch also, uh, yeah, it was a nice relationship with him. I also asked him about Brøndby here before I came. And yeah, then I saw like Marianne, our mama. She's a best friend with Jens' wife. So <laughs> it's unbelievable how life gives you some stuff sometimes back. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to your first game for Brumby mm -hmm. because there was of course a lot of focus on you after the game in Weile. Mm -hmm. um, now you, it's distant a little bit. Do you understand now how crazy it no. was for a first game for a goalkeeper? Like this is the, you cannot imagine a better start like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's also crazy because my first game in Austria I ever played, it was in 2015, mm. I think. 2015, uh, it was also a good game for me. And then I had a break of two years and then it was also a 0-0 in Salzburg. <laughs> so it's, I don't know why, but sometimes I got the luck always in my debuts. Also with the national team, it was quite a good performance for me. So. Uh, always on my debuts, I got luck. Or maybe it's not luck, but for me, it's always luck. Yeah, but the, you know, that was what I liked about the interview after the game. Yeah. Because, of course, all the journalists, we were asking you, like, about the the feelings and the penalty. Yeah. And what I really liked was that you said, no, this was not luck. I knew where he was going to kick the ball because of I studied it. Of course I knew it. it, but it's yeah. luck in the end. Yeah, I know, but... But he has to shoot there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, we prepare every time from the penalties, but in the end, it's you need the luck that he will shoot exactly in this corner. He's a bit nervous, like this guy was, I think, as well in this situation. And yeah, you got the right timing. Mm. You need to be with one foot, like they do the rules, what they got now on penalties for the keepers is shit because they're making it more difficult every time. Mm -hmm. One foot has to touch the line all the time. So I saw a, a penalty in Germany on the weekend and it was crazy because the goalkeeper just stood in the middle. The player also shot in the middle. He saved it, but he was this in front of the line. And then they had to repeat it. I was like, come on, guys, please be honest. Yes. This is... Yeah. But yeah, in the end it was luck for me. But it must have been the perfect start for you also with the, with the fans, building a relationship yeah. with the fans. Yeah, the fans are amazing. I can only repeat what I what I say every time. The fans are pff, amazing. I've not seen something like this in in Austria. There is also a big club in in Vienna. They wanna be a big club, but they are not a good club. I have to say this now. Yeah, there's only one club, and they are purple in Vienna. 
the other club they wanna have like a crowd like this, but never, <laughs> never, never. Um, now you're here on a on a loan deal. Yeah. Um, are you starting to think about the future? <laughs> this we are we're in November now. Yeah. I'm I'm just here since October. No, August. August. I came right here. End of August or middle of August. So just enjoy the moment. Always. We have to to fight for our place in the table. We have to fight for our development in the team. How we grow as a team, also game by game. And yeah, I will not spend any thoughts on this until we are for sure in this group of how you call it, Meister Meister Spiel Runde. Yeah. Yeah, like Meister this. Spiel, yeah. Meister yeah. Spiel Runde. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we can then we can continue our thoughts on the future. Now I'm gonna try a little bit anyway, but yeah. because you seem like a good fit in the team, like so it must yeah. be like it's not. I don't like know what the focus is from the club. <laughs> no, I don't know either. I think me and the club we are enjoying at the moment just that we are really good, mm. uh, or that our position is really good at the moment, and we are quite competitive. We yeah haven't lost a game since Derby. Uh, the other team. In Copenhagen, yeah, and yeah, so we have to focus on this game first. Okay, I will ask you again in yeah. April, May. Yeah, maybe March, yeah. April, like that. Yeah, okay. could could be okay. Yeah. When we are in the midst of skips. Patrick, looking back on uh, on your first period here in Bramby, what are you most satisfied with, uh, talking football terms, on the pitch? Yeah, that we performed quite well. Like, I think the flow. We had a, a period of five, five or six games where we're just playing in the flow, mm -hmm. except the derby where we just lost our focus a bit in the last maybe 10 minutes and we got punished for, yeah. But the rest of the games we just played in the flow. Also now I always got the feeling that we, we will not lose a game. So mm -hmm. this is quite a nice period where the team also is competitive in every situation, in every game. Especially when it's late in the game, we're leading one goal up, and I never got the feeling that we we do some shit. We're always focused. We always do the right things, and we can also defend really good. Yeah, um, you have also impressed people uh, a lot with your, of course, your ability uh, on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, can you put some words on your role in the team? Like, what is your role in the build-up play? Do you have? Um, all access to do what you want. Are there some patterns that you? Or, well, can you explain a little bit? Yeah, we got that? a, we got always a plan how we want to play, um, especially with the with the player material what we got here. I think we can play ourselves out of every situation, no matter who's gonna press us, because we got the the calmness, we got the physical, yeah. Well, we got the physical part as well. We got the technical part as well. So every player is capable of solving situations which are difficult. So we always got a good plan how we want to do the build-up. And yeah, if the coaches want me to take a big part in, then I mm -hmm. can take. Of course, I'm not afraid of playing with the ball. No. Would you rather, if you had, the, if you have the choice every time you get the ball, would you rather shoot a short pass or a long ball? Of course, short. No, of course. <laughs> I hate playing long. Yeah. Like, for example, when I see goal kicks, the goalkeeper is like this. Mm. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Yeah. It's funny, you know, it's fun. Yeah. There's no better feeling when, when the opponent want to press you and you get out of this pressing. Mm. I think this is one of the best feelings you get on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> because you open up everything behind. And that's yeah, just a beautiful feeling. Yeah, and as you said, the goalkeeper role has changed a lot in that. Mm. Like, you're an extra. Because you got an extra player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's um, yeah for me it's yeah. I feel comfortable in this role I always did I was in Austria I had a, a bigger role in in build up situations because sometimes I had the most touches of the team it was it was crazy but here this is also what I like nobody's hiding to get the ball you know mm -hmm. so it's quite nice to be in a team where everybody wants the ball mm -hmm. all the time no matter how difficult the situation is so you know you can play every time every ball. Oh. But you're still you're 26 in goalkeeper age. That's quite uh, young still. Yeah. Looking at uh, Thomas, for example, you you have a lot of years to go. Yeah. Um, 
So I will not play until 40. <laughs> you will not? Nah. No. Okay. I'm on the mountains then with my house on the mountains and relaxing when I'm 40. Yeah, okay. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, 26 is quite young for, for a goalkeeper still. Um, so what are you still working on like in your own play? I think there are many parts, but I will not uh, tell them now. <laughs> because then you probably know what I think, what my weaknesses are. So um, yeah, we're working good on it mm. with Anka and uh, yeah, all the stuff. Okay. And it's a good group, goalkeeper group? Brilliant. Really good. Also like uh, the mood and uh, how the daily work is with this group is just beautiful. Everybody's motivated. Everybody is always hyped and there are no bad days. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you, you told us also about the, that the team, there's a good like chemistry in the team. Mm -hmm. um, who are the most silly guys in the dressing room? The most silly guys? Yeah, like who make fun jokes and pranks and stuff like that? Uh, Shawnee Kleiber, of course, I have to say he's, <laughs> he's got quite a loud voice. <laughs> but it's, it's not that it's uh, unnecessary or it's always funny when Shawnee Kleiber mm -hmm. is talking. So... I would say Shoni Kleiber, Ohi also, um, quite funny guys. Yeah, all, all of them are funny. Nobody is like shy. It's like a really nice group of boys. Yeah. What Carsten did here, really good. Good job, Carsten. Mm -hmm. Good job, Carsten. <laughs> <laughs> Do you spend time with the guys outside of the training? Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's... Uh, Oh, it's it's really cool also from the club. That's what you have to say that we had like an event of mini golf mm -hmm. where all the, the players, their families, the coaching staff, their families, like everybody came together just to meet each other at one place and play mini golf in different groups, you know. So I played with the coach and Quist and <laughs> it was just funny guys from the office. Did you well. win? Uh, yes, I won. But I had a phone call. This was... It was a, a weird situation because I had a phone call from the national team goalie coach. So I had to interrupt <laughs> my game and then I came back and then I was no more focused. And yeah, yeah. but I won. No, no, I missed the last, the last part. I think I missed. It was like a shit hole where you have to hit the hole and you get three points. If you don't hit it, you get seven points. So I was seven putts or seven, uh, how you call it like this when you, when you play, how you call it? Seven pushes. No, how you I call don't it? Know. I'm not a golfer. Um, yeah, let's say putts. Yeah. So I was seven putts in front, and then I missed the last one, and then I had seven points on, and then somebody else won. But yeah. except of the last hole, the holes number one till eighteen, I won. So it was nice. Yeah, cool team event, and yeah, it's it's just beautiful. Mm. Everybody, if you ask somebody, everybody's open. Yeah, let's go out for a drink or do this, do this. So it's good, guys. You enjoy life. Yep. Uh, Patrick, is there anything that you feel like uh, we should talk about? Anything I forgot, maybe? Uh, if you have some good. Yeah, the prices are high in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I'm true. like in Austria, it's also expensive uh, because they are always going higher, higher, higher. But here it's something <laughs> else. I don't know if the. If the people earn more here, is it? I, I think if compared compare to, to many countries, yeah, yeah we, I think yeah. so. But okay, it's then still, it's okay. Still fucking expensive. Yeah, I it's agree expensive. With you. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is in Austria, the prices are high and the people not earn that much. So uh, it's hard. Yeah. I also don't know how the prices are here to, to buy an apartment or something. Is it high or? Yeah. Yeah? This is, goes in the wrong direction, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you are part of the Sluseholm gang, I can... No. No? No, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. Islandsbrügge. Islandsbrügge. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's But easier to, to reach the city and also to, to get in the park, in this big park there next to Islandsbrügge. Mm. It's a beautiful park. You can walk in there for five hours without uh, going home the same way. So, pff, beautiful country. Yeah. Great. Pat Patrick, it was... Uh, Nice that you took the time to, uh, to talk to us and, and nice to get to know you a little bit better. Of well, course. Good luck with the rest of uh, Thank the you. season here. We hope for a lot of success. Yeah, hopefully it will be nice in here. <laughs> <laughs>